this was actually existing. Oh, wow. So um, it was a, a guest house, you know, it has a second floor. Well, come on in. This is the, uh, the lounge that we put together. And, uh, you know, it's big enough for a whole band to like hang out. And, and, and it's sometimes it's important that you separate the people and get, you know, who's ever not working out of the control room and, and get them into, uh, into a setting where they can relax and watch movies and play games and do whatever they want. And uh, um, so we built the lounge. There's a kitchen back there, which is also not finished yet. <laughs> Some of the stuff that, that I've been doing, from Skid Row, Metallica, Extreme, Ozzy, Motley Crue, uh, and then more of the same, pretty much around Dokken, except Striper, and uh, you know, more of the same all around. And way back then, they used to, when, when we still recorded onto tape, they used to give you a uh, Golden Reel Award for every gold record that was completely recorded on, on that brand of tape. And they would give $1,000 to a charity for each one that they gave out. Yeah, this is the trophy room. <laughs> if Elvis can have one, we can have one. That's right. And come on through, we go into the control room. This is a actually an airlock um, when all the doors are closed you know it's it's there to not have any sound come out and you know and as you can see here um, the rooms are separated they're not they're not connected this room is completely a room inside a room it's not connected here there's air in between there it's not connected there so these walls swing all on their own and then it deadens when it goes into here. So they're decoupled from the exterior wall and from each other. And from the roof. And from the roof. Yeah. Yeah. And even uh, the concrete slab is split right under here. So there's a split going through here. So the two parts of the concrete are not connected either. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, for what I do, that's as good as it gets. All right. Now we are um, in the control room. And the control room was built. Uh, based on certain dimensions uh, and the dimensions are laid out in a way so you don't have any overlapping standing waves. You know the problem is you always have standing waves but the problem is if you have that wall and that wall doing the same standing wave and they add up then you have a buildup and you hear too much of that frequency or from reflections that come back from the back wall or from the side walls and they cancel out then you're not hearing enough of that frequency and if you don't hear enough you put more on and you take it out of here and it'll sound wrong so we have uh, if we go over here uh, the room is totally symmetric in terms of shape if we close the door then you can see um, the door has a magnetic seal so we can, um, you know, it kind of like seals very tight to the outside. This is all soft. These are all soft uh, um, corners that are filled with uh, um, insulation material. Uh, you know, the pink stuff and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of other stuff. The design is by uh, Dave Rochester. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a local studio builder designer and, and we've worked closely together on this one and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. This is soft as well, even though it's like feels hard, but it's like a 703 or 705. Soft here again and then hard there and there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over here, it's soft again on these walls. So those are base traps. And you can see we build them the same way. I've, I wanted that whole MPRAC planned into the construction. And so we build them the same way. So it's built the same way on both sides. You know? yeah. So there's like a you know, diffusing kind of situation there and the same here. Console is built in a way that you sit on 38% of the whole room length. And that apparently is where one should sit. And then everything is laid out around this. So we can see with the back speakers uh, and the front speakers, if, if you do a surround mix, you sit and ride in the circle. 
Um, the center speaker is not up yet right now because we're not doing any surround uh, right now, but you know, that way I can look through the window. <laughs> and then here in the back, you know, we use, we use this kind of expensive diffuser. <laughs> and this whole thing here is a base trap. It's, it's two feet deep and it's uh, filled with uh, insulation material around and then there is sheets of, of plywood hanging in there also that have insulation material on top and they're different thicknesses. So sound goes in, it's like Hotel California, but it never comes back out. Now I do workshops here and at times we can have 20 people in here. Mm. There's 9,000 watts of gear heating at all times and uh, um, and with 20 people, it can get warm, especially here in Tennessee. So uh, it's all factored in with a separate air conditioning just for the control room, separate air conditioning for over there, so everybody can be comfortable. And over here we have what I call the wall of doom. <laughs> and the wall of doom it is, it's, you know, uh, when this stuff is on, there will be no living organism in that room. Yeah. <laughs> you have a speaker patch bay here, uh, we're all, um, it's, in the end it's going to be 20 amps, um, show up here, the outputs of the amps show up here and can be patched into any speaker over there. Obviously you have to shut it down before you want to change speakers, but, but to me it's important that I can be in here and hear the differences. You know, if you go out there, that's the end of the day, mm. you know, so for your ears. And, and so I can be out here and, and hear the differences. And um, the only thing that's going to get changed here is um, the company that built the MW1, Creation Audio Labs, um, they're building me a 1 into 20 amp splitter. So uh, there's only one. <laughs> so only one idiot in this world that has 20 amps going, it's me. So, <laughs> um, so that's still missing in here. And, and uh, again, it's part of being able, see as a guitar player, you need to find your tone. I need to find everybody's tone, you know? So I need to be ready for, for everybody to come in and be like this, like this, like this, like this, and go through a whole bunch of different offerings you know, for uh, to get the right tone. So that's why all this. <laughs>